Hey guys, Mike here from Lunch Money Comics. Today I'm actually at an estate sale and in the listing there were comic books, but there's a huge line of people. Hopefully I can get in there and see what they have. You're looking at all the comics. Uh, I grabbed the mags, but then I'm looking at the rest of the stuff yeah. here. But yeah. help yourself, man. I don't know. Yeah, I'm seeing good stuff. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, 65 for all Star Wars. 65 for all. come in, they were 20 a piece. Well, that was nuts. So they opened the doors at eight o'clock and there was this massive stampede of people into this house. I don't blame everyone. There was some really great stuff there. There was vinyl, there were vintage toys, lots of great antiques. And I did find the comic books. There were quite a few of them and I was interested in getting all of them, but they said they were a buck a piece. And guys, honestly, there was nothing really in there even worth that. So I got like five or six of them. But the big win for me today was I found some old Kenner Star Wars toys and I got a great deal for all of them. I can't wait to go home and show you guys what I found. But my day wasn't over yet because a local library was having a huge book sale. Now they have this sale a couple of times a year and I always go not only to look for reading material, but also rare books. And sometimes I can even find comic books. Well, sure enough, on this day, I found a huge stack of comic books. I bought every single one that I could find as well as a couple other goodies that I can't wait to share with you guys. So there you go, guys. That was my quick morning of hunting for comic books at an estate sale and a local library sale. And I got a huge stack of comic books at a really great price, as well as some other things, including those vintage toys. People ask me all the time to show more of the non-comic book things that I find when I'm out hunting at strange and unusual places. Well, I definitely found some cool ones that I wanna share with you today. Before I show you what they are, if you like this sort of stuff and you wanna support the channel, do me a huge favor, go down, hit that like button, leave me a comment, share my channel with others, Feel free to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And of course, you can follow me on Instagram under Lunch Money Comics IG. So first, let's talk about that estate sale. So I saw it advertised online and saw they had all sorts of cool stuff. They had, you know, of course, comic books, but also like old sport cards, vinyl, vintage toys, antiques, all sorts of good things that I'm into. And I figured I would get there like 15 or 20 minutes before they opened and I'd have no problem getting in, getting what I wanted and getting out. Well, that didn't completely work out the way I intended. When I got there 15 minutes early, there was already a line of 50 people in front of me. And as soon as I got there, like another 50 people filled in behind me. So I was like, okay, this is gonna be a mad scramble. And sure enough, when they opened the doors at eight o'clock, and it was a tiny house, guys, there was this mad rush onto the inside. And that's actually why I didn't film too much footage. I kinda couldn't, there was no room. But I've never seen better picker etiquette in my life. I was the first one who got to the comic books. I started going through them and then a couple of guys came up behind me who were also interested, but they were very adamant, like, nope, you were here first, you go through them. And uh, you know, I was thinking of getting all of them. If I could get them for like a really cheap price, I would have, but they were mostly like, you know, old Looney Tunes, old Archies, and just lots of things that I wasn't really into. And when I asked how much they were, they were asking for a dollar a piece. And I said, no way, forget it. Um, so I decided to go through and pick out a few that I wanted. Those guys were very gracious to let me pick through like the six or seven that I wanted. And then I handed off the rest of them and they were very happy. And even those guys kind of divvied them up between each other to make sure it was fair. So again, just politeness all around. It's very great to see that. So let me show you the comic books first before I show you the other stuff. Uh, nothing great in here, but just some kind of cool stuff I was happy to pay for. And by the way, I got these for a lot less than a dollar, which I'll explain in a minute. So let's see, we have World's Finest number 304. This one is from 1984. Pretty cool. Then we have uh, the Super Friends number 40. This is based off of the cartoon. This one's from 1981. Not bad. We have a Random Thor, uh, Mighty Thor number 420. This one is from 1990. Uh, these ones I found uh, were pretty interesting. Uh, these are Dagar the Invincible Tale Tales of Sword and Sorcery. These are all from 1974 and 1975. Uh, and all of them have these really cool painted art by Jesse um, Santos, so pretty neat here. I like these, they're very kind of like Conan or He-Man uh, kind of inspired stuff, so pretty cool. Love these old sword and sorcery ones. 
And then we have this one. This is Archie's Pals and Gals from 1990. Now, I very recently did a video um, on books that are like this. Early 90s Archie, Dan DiCarlo cover, where you have Betty and Veronica in bathing suits. In fact, I'll link to that video right here because I found a whole bunch of these for a dollar. And I said in that video, I think they were worth more than a dollar because these are very collectible. Well, quick update to that video. Since that video came out, I was able to sell several of those books for like $15 or $20 a piece online. So these are definitely collectible. So I was absolutely happy to pick up a book very similar to those uh, for a dollar or less. Pretty cool. So the last comic I got at this estate sale is probably the most unique. I was going through all the comics and this just sort of like fell out from between a couple of them. I took one look at it and I knew I had to have it. It is this. This is a mini Batman comic from 1980. See, it's titled The Joker's Last Laugh. It shows Joker on a playing card. It's almost like an homage to Batman 251, that very famous Neil Adams cover. And it took me a little bit of searching to figure out where this came from. But this came out of a post cereal box in 1980. It was like a cereal prize. And originally it would have been in a cellophane wrapper, which of course is not. Uh, there's a little bit of damage to the back cover, but otherwise it's in pretty great shape. And you know, guys, anything unique like this is worth picking up, especially if it has Joker on the cover. People love that. Uh, and I was very pleasantly surprised to find out when I looked it up online that this can go for a little bit of money. So the irony is of all the comic books I found that day at this estate sale, um, this is probably the best one, this little mini comic here. So very happy to have found this one and pick it up. Very cool. So once I was done with the priority of finding the comic books, I had a little bit of time to look around this place and see if there was anything else I was interested in. And I found a whole room full of toys. You guys saw it in the footage. There was even like a Superman like pinball machine, mini pinball machine. It wasn't in great shape. It was missing parts, but it was still really cool. But of course, the best thing in that room, I thought, was the Star Wars toys. So they were all from the late 70s, all made by Kenner. I had plenty of these toys when I was a kid. Um, in fact, I still do have a lot of them. So I'm always looking for these. I know they're very collectible, especially if they're in good shape. Um, and these were, some were good, some were bad, but I looked at the price and it was $65 for all the Star Wars stuff. It was a no brainer, guys. But of course, just like in the other room, once I walked up to the toys, one of the same guys who's looking at comic books came behind me, asked if I was gonna get them. I said, yes, I am. And he was a little bummed out. He was a younger guy who's trying to get into picking himself, trying to find things at estate sales and yard sales and resell. We had actually a good chat uh, outside. He actually offered me more money than when I paid for all these, but I wanted to keep some of these for myself and maybe sell some as well. So uh, I know it's not comic books, but I said I'd be showing more toys in the channel. And a lot of people who are into comic books are also into Star Wars and other nerdy things like this. So I'm happy to share this with some of you. Hopefully some of you out there uh, appreciate seeing these. Definitely let me know if you had some of these toys when you were a kid. So let's start with the figures themselves. We got a Chewbacca. We got a Han Solo. We've got a Princess Leia. She still has her robe. None of these have weapons. Too bad. But the robes are always good to have. We, of course, have a C-3PO and an R2-D2. I know R2s can go for quite a bit because um, depending on the stickers on them, you know, these stickers kind of get peeled and fall off. Uh, so if you have an R2 in good condition, they can actually be worth quite a bit of money. Uh, then we have a couple of Tusken Raiders, aka Sand People, also with their robes. They do not have their weapons. I have a Jawa who's still in his robe. Love these guys. Awesome. <laughs> uh, then I have a headless Luke Skywalker. <laughs> not worth much, but maybe someone could use the lightsaber, an extra part or something like that. Um, and then let's talk about the actual vehicles. So um, we have an X-Wing. Now, obviously this is not complete. It's missing the canopy. Uh, one of the wings is broken. Um, it doesn't extend, you know, when you put the S foils in attack position to be super nerdy. Um, still pretty cool. I have one of these already. This one's definitely in better shape than the one I had as a kid. So not bad. Uh, we also have a uh, land speeder. We have Luke's land speeder right here. Um, actually in pretty good shape. There's a little bit of paint that came off uh, on the front there, but otherwise, you know, the canopy's in shape, the hood opens up and everything, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then there was this TIE Fighter. So, these TIE Fighters I see all the time, and they're always busted up. And the reason is that the wings are supposed to detach. There's a button you could hit, and then the, you know, the wings would pop off. Well, this was in pieces when I found it, and sometimes when I find them like that, you can't put them back together because they're broken, but that's not the case. I was able to put this together right when I got back to my car, it was in fantastic shape. And as an extra bonus inside the vehicle, there was a bonus Darth Vader with the cape. So uh, I didn't even know that was in there when I bought this guy. So that was really cool. Now for all these vehicles, um, other than the TIE Fighter, um, I actually have all of these uh, figures already uh, in my collection. So some of these I'll keep if they're in better condition. The other ones I'm planning on reselling. But again, $65 for all of the Star Wars toys, guys, I thought was a pretty great deal. 
And it was made even better when, when I walked up to pay, I didn't bring a bag or a box, rookie mistake. I had all of these toys like balancing on top of the comic books. And when I was taking my wallet out and paying, I took out the $65 for the vehicles and the figures and the people running it just said like, keep keep the comic books, you're, you're fine. So I got all the comic books for free. So 65 bucks got all of these toys uh, and the comic books. I thought that was a fantastic deal, guys. Um, like I said, some of these I'm gonna keep, some of them I'm gonna resell, uh, uh, but they are all cool and I'm very happy to have found them. So now let's talk about this library sale. So the way this works is local people donate books to this library all year round. And then twice a year, they have this big blowout sale in their basement where they sell the books really cheap to raise money for the library. And it's very successful. And whenever the sale's going on, I absolutely go. Uh, as I mentioned in that voiceover, I like old books and I found some very valuable books there in the past. And on occasion, I can even find some comic books. As a matter of fact, a few months back, I did a whole video on this library sale. I'll link to it right here. Um, in that case, I was able to find a whole bunch of like modern variants and I got them for a quarter a piece and I was able to sell several of them for like 15 or 20 bucks each. So uh, it can be very profitable if you know what you're looking for. So this was the last day of the sale where everything is half price. So normally comic books and magazines are considered uh, 50 cents. And so on this last day, they're a quarter each. I went into that same spot in the kids section and I saw a huge stack of comic books and I just grabbed them all sight unseen. And most of these are all the same title. And they are this. This is 52. And what is this? It's a series from 2006. So let's go back to 2006. DC just had a big crossover event called Infinite Crisis. It was sort of like a successor or a spiritual successor sequel to Crisis on Infinite Earths. And whereas Crisis on Infinite Earths sort of consolidated all the DC multiverse into one world, um, Infinite Crisis sort of blew it back up again, right? You had all sorts of multiverses sort of spiraling out, and you had new characters, new continuities, all sorts of big things with big repercussions. And then right after that series, they had something called One Year Later, which basically was one year later, talking about all of the repercussions that have happened from that Infinite Crisis storyline. Well, this series right here, 52, fills in that missing year gap between those two big series. And the way DC published this was um, once a week in real time. Each one of these books takes place in the DC universe over one week, and they were published a week at a time. So that's actually pretty impressive nowadays to do that. And uh, I don't have all 52 of them. I have 29 of them. So I did pretty good. I definitely have most of them. Now, because there are lots of new characters and new continuities and things like that, new uh, retellings of origin stories, there are lots of minor keys in this set. I'm not going to go through all of them right now, but I definitely picked out a couple that I want to talk about with you. Uh, the first one is this. This is week 12, um, and this is the first appearance of the second Isis, who ends up becoming Black Adam's wife. So worth a couple bucks, uh, but definitely the best one in the whole set. I think it's definitely the best key in this whole collection uh, is this one. This is week 11, and this is the first full appearance of the Kate Kane Batwoman. Now, a lot of people know who the Kate Kane Batwoman is nowadays because uh, she had her own TV show um, in the CW Arrowverse. The first season of Batwoman um, was the Kate Kane Batwoman played by Ruby Rose, at least in the first season. And uh, yeah, a lot of people like her. And uh, this is definitely her first appearance. And it's definitely, in terms of a key, the best one in the whole set and worth way more than the 25 cents I paid for all of them, right? There are 29 of them, so I got them for like $7.50. Really great deal, really happy to pick this one up um, in a pretty cool key in its own right. But that's not the only thing I found. There were a couple other weird ones tossed in there. Um, this one's borderline, not even worth bringing up. Uh, this is a Magnus Robot Fighter uh, 25 crazy chrome cover uh, from, I'll flash you guys with that, uh, from the uh, early 90s, pretty cool. And then uh, hiding amongst a whole bunch of old magazines, I found this. This is Dick Tracy Adventures from 1991. You see it's a larger format comic book. Very cool. Uh, it's all black and white on the inside. I'm not sure if this is, you know, reprints or whatnot. Uh, but the reason this jumped out to me is that you have this fantastic cover by L.B. Cole, of all people. So very cool. I absolutely had to have this for a quarter. Thought it was awesome. So there is one more non-comic related thing that I got at this library sale that I have to share with you guys. It was right next to the Dick Tracy comic book. And as a gamer, I had to pick this up. It was only 50 cents. What is it? This is the base rules to the James Bond role-playing game from 1983. I'm a big RPGer. I love Dungeons and Dragons. I play with my son. So I had to pick this up. Even if we never play, I needed to get it for the reading material alone. I mean, you can look at the stats for like his weapons and all of his cars and stuff. Uh, there's really cool art in it. Totally worth the 50 cents. 
Um, listen, if any of you out there played this game in the 80s or later, definitely go down to the comments and let me know. I would love to hear from you. Let me know what kind of game this is. Let me know if it is worth reading through and playing it uh, with my friends and family. Very happy to pick this up for 50 cents and I wanted to share it with all of you. So there you go, guys. That was my pretty productive morning of hunting for comic books in strange and unusual places. And I even got some pretty cool non-comic collectibles to boot. Head on down to the comments, guys, and let me know which of my pickups you like the best. What do you think of the comic books I got at the estate sale? Nothing to write home about, but I'm definitely happy to have found this mini cereal box Batman comic book. I just think it's really, really cool. Let me know what you think of the 52 series. If any of you have actually read all of these, I'd love to hear from you. And let me know what you think of this first Kate Kane Batwoman. I think it's a pretty good pickup. Uh, let me know if you like the L.B. Cole Dick Tracy magazine, or if you played the James Bond role-playing game. And last but certainly not least, guys, let me know what you think of the Star Wars toys. Like I said, I don't show toys too much on this channel, but people have been asking for it. I find this stuff all the time, so I figured I would share it with all of you. Let me know if you had these toys. I know most of us who grew up in the 80s and 70s did, but they're still pretty cool to see. Let me know if you want to see more toys on the channel, guys. I will always be happy to oblige. In the meantime, guys, I hope you keep looking for comic books and toys in strange and unusual places. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.